everyone. Thanks for joining me this morning. Thanks, Kat, for, it, for a nice overview of what Red Cross has been up to. Um, oh, that's a good start. <laughs> okay, well, we'll skip over those. It's not essential. Um, who of you, uh, my name is Martijn. I've been involved with OSM for a while. I created this thing called MapRoulette. Who has heard of MapRoulette in this room? Okay, most. Who of you have used it to solve some problems in OSM or map stuff? Okay, still about half. Who of you has actually created tasks uh, in MapRoulette for others to solve? Okay, still it's a good handful. Great. Um, so you're all familiar with MapRoulette. I'll go really quickly over over sort of some 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 metrics, but then I want to really dive into some of the challenge types that exist in MapRoulette and how they sort of. I think a lot of people are familiar with the traditional way MapRoulette was uh, was envisaged, which is you were presented with a task, a question, basically. Um, the, asking you to go into OSM, to go into ID, go into JOSM, solve a very particular problem, uh, map this, solve that, um, and then go back to MapRoulette and go to the next one. Um, I, I want to talk about some of the more some of the newer ways that exist to um, to get people to solve things in MapRoulette. Um, so yeah, there's, I'm going to get rid of this little thing if I can. here there we go okay so no videos I guess but <laughs> there's only a couple and they're not that important um, so map roulette um, tasks for all skill levels most of them can be can be completed in a minute or less um, there's actually quite a few to choose from they're organized in challenges which are groups of similar tasks um, there is quite a few advanced functions for for peer review and and, and task management and challenge management um, can download stuff as CSV. You can import your your challenge data into into other applications if you want. Um, the tasks are for anyone to create. If you if you have a MapRoulette account, which is really just an OSM account, um, you can go in and, and create your own tasks. Um, I've, I have a few videos online on how to do that. I, I will go into creating a specific type of task that I'll talk about in a minute. But um, it all kind of works the same. It's all sort of um, uh, wizard driven, if you will. Uh, I think MapRoulette is great for map for map events and for for teams that want to solve solve problems together. I use it in my local Salt Lake City community where I'm from, or where I live, uh, and um, and it's always a good a good way to sort of yeah get people excited about solving specific issues in OSM. Uh, so uh, I looked it up. <laughs> the first time I talked about uh, what is now MapRoulette was in uh, was in 2012. Mm -hmm. Ten years ago, <laughs> in Portland, uh, at State of the Map, uh, there. Who, who was who was there? Who was at that conference? Okay, four or five. That's awesome. Okay, uh, it was memorable. It was uh, yeah, still early days for State of the Map US. We're now at the tenth anniversary, which is, I think, incredible. Um, so that's where it all started. I just coded up my first prototype in, in Python, and it's come a long way since. Um, I guess you're all you're all familiar, so I don't have to go too much into that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about challenge flavors. Oh, I forgot to set my timer. I'm going to do that real quick. I tend to talk too much in these things. I'll give myself 12 minutes. There you go. Um, so the traditional one we talked about, right? Check this, fix that, please. Um, the mapper fixes the map uploads. Return to map roulette and repeat. So until you had enough. Um, this is an example. So this is a um, this is a, a task that asks asks people to add add Wikidata tags to to villages that don't have them. So the task is really to kind of look those up on the internet or look those up in any source that you have. Add the appropriate tag to map uh, to the to the feature in OSM and and um, and continue. So that's the traditional challenge type that probably most of you are familiar with. Um, there's two other types that I want to talk a little bit more about today. Uh, one is tag fix. Um, that's where MapRoulette proposes a changes to the existing tags on a feature in OSM. Uh, and the mapper just accepts or rejects those changes um, and then repeats. So there's no round trip to ID or JOSM. So it, all, everything happens right inside MapRoulette. Uh, so it's, it's potentially quicker, but it only works on, on tags, right? So this is an example. Um, this is schools in Scotland and the, 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 the UK or Scottish community has found 
additional data to augment these school features. And uh, the tags are, uh, I don't have a pointer, but you can see on the top right, I think I have another slide actually. Yeah, so this, this shows it a little bit better. It shows the, the tags as they are currently in OSM and it, it shows the changes that are pre being proposed. You, you can go in and accept the changes as they are made um, or you can actually edit all the keys and values before uploading them if you see there if you see that there's still stuff that is that is questionable so this is a much quicker way to have people um, modify uh, modify the, um, the, the the tags for a feature based on additional information that that the challenge owner uh, has um, so that's step basically a, 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 the second iteration the third one that takes this a little step further oh my emoji blew up and, <laughs> and get everything so this is all kinds of problems I thought like Google Slides is the same everywhere no it isn't the emoji looked different I'm, I went wild with those in this presentation so now the, the, bottom, the bottom is cut off I'll take you through it though um, so MapRelet proposes in this case for the cooperative challenge an entire change set basically that's already pre-baked right so you can and I'll, I'll go into that a little bit more uh, the mapper can either so the mapper goes to Jossum this only works in Jossum I probably want to make it work with ID at, at some point but currently it doesn't um, the change set gets carried over into Jossum with all the features and, and things that are that are being proposed and the mapper can then edit them still of course uh, or reject and or accept them as is go back to map roulette and uh, and and uh, go on to the next one that was the third the third one was just again repeat until you don't want to anymore um, so this is how that looks um, it's all a little small but um, this is a challenge that I actually created myself as, as sort of a demo um, and I'm, I'll, I'll go into how that that's actually the heart of the presentation is how do you create these things and how do you how can you how can you uh, go in and and make this kind of challenge yourself uh, so this is about um, the M Microsoft building footprints are you familiar with that open data set that Microsoft released um, some time ago I'm guessing most of you are um, there's there are many ways to incorporate that data into OSM MapRoulette is actually one of them you, the, the challenge here is to basically look at these buildings one by one, right? And and have don't don't see it as an import, but as a human curated sort of um, conflation with OSM. Uh, so the buildings are presented one by one. Um, you click the button, it takes you to Jossum with the building already presented as a change, and you can then go right ahead and upload. But you can also this challenge specifically asks you to, of course, check the check the alignment and the shape of the building, make make the edits as needed, and also Perhaps if you want, if you can see what type of building it is to make it more specific. And then, but ideally the shortest path is that you can just upload the change set right away. So it's sort of an alternative to, to import that is guided by, by human mappers. Um, so this is, this is how it then looks in Jossum. It just look, it downloads a little bit of OSM data plus the, plus the thing that is, um, the, the building footprint that is coming from, from, um, uh, from, from the Microsoft data that was imported into MapRoulette. Um, you can then sort of change the things that you need to change and, uh, and upload, right? And you see that, that MapRoulette already takes care of a lot of the change set comments, um, the sources, uh, that, that can all be defined as part of the challenge definition. So um, how do you make these? So I want to spend a few minutes on look, how do you create these types of challenges? Because it's, it's a feature that's been in MapRoulette for about a year now, but it's not being used very much. So I wanted to take this opportunity to talk a little bit about how to, um, how to create this type of, this type of challenge. Um, so the workflow is as follows. How do you, um, you first have to sort of find a way to manufacture these changes, right? So what are the changes that you're presenting to the mapper? Um, you have to then convert them to MapRoulette, uh, MapRoulette flavor of GeoJSON that has all the properties that make it into, into, a, into a challenge data. Um, and then you have to go into MapRoulette and create the challenge. Ideally, I would love for this to be only two steps. I mean, the manufacturing of the OSM changes is something that you have to kind of have to do, of course. But the second step is a little bit, um, is a little bit um, tricky. Uh, trickier than needed. Ideally, I would love for MapRoulette to be able to just accept that um, or take those OSM changes directly. Currently, it can. So that's why I'm taking you through this, to, um, so you can see um, see how that works. It's not going to be very technical, but I'm happy to kind of go into more detail if you want um, um, uh, offline after the presentation. I've done this as a I've done this as a workshop online for State of the Map last year as well for State of the Map International. So there, I think there's a video of that online that I can point you to. 
so the first step is to manufacture those OSM changes. Right? What I did here in this case, I, I, I took a chunk of the building footprints from Microsoft, I loaded them into QGIS. Um, I loaded the, for the same geographic area the, 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 um, the OSM buildings that were existing. Um, and then um, did a little bit of work to kind of intersect those and conflate that and see uh, which Microsoft building footprints I was going to ignore for this because there was already something in OSM. Um, this is technically unnecessary because you, you already have people check anyway, but it's nice to have clean it up a little bit. So this is, uh, this is the, sort of the pre-work that you have to do so to, to, cr to create a data that you can then, that you can, that you can then um, use as the basis for your, for your challenge, right? Um, then, the second step of that is that you then go into, so the, the way you create these, these, these changes that you want the mappers to consider is actually you, you go into JOSM and you make the changes as if you were going to upload them, right? So you, you load all these building footprints you create the proper OSM tags that are uh, that are needed. Um, so building equals yes, um, and um, and uh, and yeah, this is basically all there is. Like you have you have to add the tag building equals yes, and then each feature becomes a building in OSM. Uh, and then instead of uploading to to OSM, of course, uh, you don't want to do that. <laughs> um, are you doing it for each individual building or as a group? Well, what I did is here is you you use you use the find. Um, you just basically select all the buildings and then um, uh, bulk edit the, 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 the building the building tag so it, it changes it for all the features. Um, instead of committing it, of course, then you've got to uh, save it as an OSM file, right? An OSM JOSM change file that is basically the default format for for uh, for serializing a, uh, a, a an edited layer in OSM. This is a this is and this contains all the changes that you made um, to the to that layer. So that becomes an a .OSM file, uh, if you will. Um, and then, oh, this was a, basically the, how I did this in JOS in the video, so it's not essential. Um, it's funky that I don't have access to view it, but um, there we go, onwards. Okay, there we go, yeah. So then, so this step that is sort of com um, unnecessarily complicated, but it is there, so I'm gonna highlight it anyway. So there's a, there's a command line tool that is designed to convert this OSM file into the GeoJSON uh, that is uh, that uh, that um, uh, that MapRelet expects to make the challenge, right? Um, you can install it from npm. It's a, a JavaScript tool, um, and then the, the, the syntax. There's a, there's a little bit of um, command line help that guides you through this. But basically, you, you you create that change file using the using a, a fairly straightforward command line, um, and the input would be the OSM file. The output would be the GeoJSON file. So finally, then uh, you're 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 done and prepared for to to upload this to um, to MapRoulette, which is basically then then it becomes sort of the regular process of of creating a, of creating a, uh, a challenge, which um, I guess most of you haven't haven't done, but it's actually quite straightforward. I'm gonna highlight. I'm gonna have a few slides to kind of show you what that wizard looks like in case you haven't seen it before. So now what you have in your hand is a GeoJSON file that MapRoulette will accept. Um, this is the actual command line that I used to create this uh, to create this um, this GeoJSON file. So the input file is the OSM file that I saved from JOSM. The output file, I mean, by, by default it will it, it will it will emit to standard out, but you have this out um, parameter that you can use to save it to a file directly. Um, so then, yeah, the creating the challenges is pretty much the same as a regular challenge creation. And again, I have a couple of screenshots that guide you that will show you uh, what that wizard looks like. So you upload the GeoJSON that you just created. Um, you set the instructions, the default, uh, the default aerial layer that you want the mappers to see. Um, you should always test MapRoulette challenges that you create extensively because it's a lot. It's a bigger. I think it's a big responsibility to have mappers do specific things um, that you tell them to do. You know, um, and you have to be very specific in your instructions. Um, and I think that's it's important to to, uh, to test to test your your challenge under 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 different circumstances. There's always unexpected um, elements that look okay. Well, like I missed this the first time around. I need to go in and edit the instructions because they're not specific enough. You go through a few iterations. Maybe you show it to a couple of friends uh, before you go live because the map roulette allows you to keep the challenge under wraps and just share the link, and then you can later make it public so it becomes searchable in MapRoulette as well, or findable, discoverable, I should say. Um, yeah, I just have a little bit of time to, to, to go through these screenshots. This is what the wizard looks like. It's basically one big, uh, one screen, but I, 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 um, 
I div divvied it up in a few different screenshots. So the first is the name of your challenge that you that you need to give to it. That it makes that is the, basically the title, um, the date the data was sourced, which which could be the data um, that should be in this case the data, um, the date that the Microsoft building data was sourced, ideally if you can find it. Uh, then the description that that is basically the subtitle of the challenge. Um, there's a category that makes it that helps people find it. Um, there's a there's a limited number of those. And then, most importantly, the, the detailed instructions for the mappers. And you can use Markdown uh, to, to create links and bold fixed text and all those things. Um, these instructions, again, these are the most important, really the most important thing, because that's what the mappers look at when they when they go in and solve your try and solve your uh, your tasks. Um, difficulty level, all, again, to help mappers filter uh, the challenges that they're looking for. Um, that's sort of a that's sort of your own. Um, Stop it. There's, that's a little, a little bit sort of subjective, of course. And then whether this challenge should be hidden or discoverable. Um, this is a feature. This is something I, only I see because I can feature challenges because I'm the master of the domain. Um, <laughs> so you wouldn't see this. Um, you can add additional keyboards again for discoverability. Um, and then um, something whether it requires local knowledge or not this is actually more for the future when MapRelate would be more suitable for a mobile uh, for mobile users which it currently isn't then it becomes really relevant uh, whether local knowledge is required and you're actually on the ground and there's a bunch of more detailed um, uh, that I've collapsed here a bunch of more detailed um, parameters that you can set for the MapRelate challenge as well uh, the default base map but then there's also all kinds of prioritization rules that you can add there's really a lot of advanced stuff that you can all skip um, you can look into that, but it's not it's not necessary. Um, so yeah, that's, I think I think I I thought I'd highlight this particular challenge type because I think it's a little bit underused. There are a few out there that you can you can actually filter by challenge type if you go into MapRelate and you, you go to the filter bar. Um, but I, I felt like it was worthwhile to spend a little bit of time with you to to highlight uh, that particular challenge type. So summarizing, there's the traditionals, there's the tag, tag fix, which the creation process of that is, is very similar to this cooperative that I just that I was just talking about. And then the cooperative challenge that I just highlighted with the building footprints. Uh, the particular one that I just created, you can try using this uh, handy short link um, that takes you directly to the challenge. And then, um, and that is all I have. Yes, my contact info is there. Um, and uh, I'll be sitting down during the lunch break uh, to huddle around Map Roulette a little bit. And, um, and um, I'd, I'd love your feedback for the project. And uh, I'll take maybe one or two questions if we have time. Yeah.